Stress has a significant impact on the body. If I were to pick the one thing that I would want to see improved for people when they're thinking about improving their health, it would be to modulate or manage their stress. Stress specifically can accelerate aging. It can have a negative impact on your immune system. It can contribute to symptoms like insomnia, anxiety, fatigue, and therefore it has a big impact on how you feel day to day. So acute stress is actually favorable. We want our bodies to respond acutely to things like, you have a test tomorrow and you need to study for it, or someone cuts you off on the highway and you need to respond swiftly. These are important reactions to day-to-day -day things that happen in your life. On the other hand, chronic or pervasive stress can be more problematic and it has its tentacles into everything. So it, it can negatively impact your mood, your energy, your cognition, your immune system, and generally the function of your body and hormones. When you feel it acutely, it's often quite obvious, right? You might have an elevation in your heart rate, you've got the release of certain kind of neurotransmitters and hormones like cortisol that are going to kind of shorten how narrowly you focus on something. They're gonna make you incredibly like able to run. You've got excess energy going to your muscles to be able to run away from something. And you may feel this very simply when you have acute stress. Chronic stress can sometimes be more difficult to understand. Now, you may have conditions like anxiety or insomnia or lowered immune capacity that give you clues that you're chronically stressed. But unfortunately, sometimes people become very habituated to that overall chronic pervasive stress and may not even recognize that there's a problem unless they ground it with some markers that we can look at to assess if stress is present in the body. One of the most important markers that we look at to understand if stress is present in the body is a cortisol level. And cortisol is one of the primary stress hormones that is gonna be released when you're dealing with stress. Acutely will rise and fall and more chronically can stay elevated and have negative impacts on the body. Essentially, it starts in the brain. Your brain senses that there is a problem and your brain then will tell your adrenal glands hey, there's an issue here and your adrenal glands will release cortisol. And as it does it, probably releasing norepinephrine, these sympathetic nervous system neurotransmitters as well. And this will start the cascade towards either acute problem that can be resolved or chronically that may not be resolved and have the more negative health impacts. So when you move from acute to chronic, you essentially have a persistently high level of cortisol that stays up without resolving and coming back down. A cortisol blood test can tell us, are you in range, generally speaking, kind of either dealing with normal levels of stress or kind of low levels of stress, or if very elevated, may tell us that that stress system is chronically activated. If we see an out of range cortisol, we're first wanting to understand what are the main sources of this and kind of very important lifestyle things I would say are fundamental to supporting the cortisol system. So that's eating a nutrient dense, well-balanced diet and ideally eating in some type of regular time frame to support your blood sugar. Really thinking about stress reduction. We can change the way we relate to stress by modulating things like our breath. So deep breathing really sends a signal back to the brain that actually things are okay and you can slow down the secretion of cortisol as a result. Sleep also plays a role in your cortisol levels. Chronic sleep deprivation is essentially considered a stressor to your body. And the more that you are going without proper levels of sleep, the higher your cortisol overall is going to be. There's also a very interesting relationship between cortisol and glucose. So if you think about it, when we are releasing cortisol, we are probably under some form of threat or stress. And to our body, that threat typically is considered something that may need glucose to support resolving the threat. So whenever we release cortisol or as our cortisol elevates, we also are releasing glucose at the same time. So here's a situation where in the absence of food, you may see rises in your glucose as a function of your cortisol rising. 
However, the relationship between cortisol and glucose is not necessarily a bad thing. If you're an athlete and you're about to do a sprint, you really want that stress response up and the dumping of a bunch of glucose so that your muscles can pull up that glucose and you can run as fast as you can. However, in the modern world, we are having these rises of cortisol because somebody cut us off, because someone was rude to us on social media, and our cortisol is rising and dumping glucose into the body, but you're not running a marathon, that glucose has nowhere to go, and it just ends up staying in your body, contributing to metabolic dysfunction. So, and if we think about stress from more of a biochemical perspective, stress, and as cortisol goes up, is also going to drive the mechanism of inflammation and oxidative stress. Inflammation generally is that, you know, destruction of tissue such they're not performing as, as well as they should. Oxidative stress is when that tissue has now kind of decomposed, it's no longer in its best capacity, and the sum total of all of this is gonna drive up disease risk and increase your overall mortality. Besides breathing, there are a few other things that we can do to reduce stress. A yoga practice can be very useful, walking, being in nature and being in community where you feel loved and cared for and seen. Finally, exercise is one that is really important, but in excess can actually drive up cortisol. So something that you wanna consider with balance. My patients often will tell me that when they are feeling stressed, they wanna go for an intense run. And while exercise is very important, when you're in an acute stress situation, doing a very intense exercise is actually just gonna perpetuate higher levels of cortisol, which is overall the opposite of what you are trying to do. So instead, consider going for a walk or doing some gentle stretching as a positive indicator to support cortisol.